you ready this morning? Can we get into it? Okay, this morning I would start speaking about what I, I have so many titles for this and I want you to listen very closely to this because as a church family we are very big on um, culture shaping and that's one of the things we believe that God has asked us to do. In the body of Christ um, there are many dispositions, many assignments given to several people even though our major assignment and the number one assignment for everyone in the body of Christ is to preach the gospel. And but for us in the new, one of our major targets while preaching the gospel is through culture transformation and culture shaping. And that's why we are very big and we do things the way we do things in the new, most especially in the creative path and creative dimension in which we do the things that we do. So this morning, I want to I want to teach on something very powerful and I want you to pay very close attention because it's truly going to bless you. I had many titles to give to this. Um, but I guess at the end of the teaching, you would have to give the title yourself. So if you're looking for a title, just call it Control C. Is that okay? What did I call it? Okay, so let's, let's get right um, into it. Now, I've made my slides open for you and what we're going to do is I'm going to share with everyone um, media please if you can help me do a barcode I'm going to share with everyone here you can just scan it afterwards and you can have my slides is that okay okay let's get right into it now this conversation next slide please just just flow with me this conversation about culture shaping and all what is it about I know that it's one subject a lot of people, you know, have different thoughts, different ideologies, different thoughts about. But let's start from the very beginning, the very beginning where all of these things start from. You know, one of the things I always do in the new and the church, in our church, is that sometimes when I want to teach some things that is new or introduction, I always go back to Genesis because I've taught you this, that Genesis is the template upon which every other thing was supposed to exist from. Remember when they came to meet Jesus and they were talking to Jesus as, to the, as about divorce and all of that. And what did Jesus say to them? He said, but from the beginning, it was not so. And so sometimes I like to take us back to the very beginning so that we can have an idea of how it all started and what it's supposed to be from the beginning. So let's start from the very beginning. In the beginning, there was light and darkness. Now, that's a profound statement in itself. A profound statement in itself. From the very beginning, there was light and darkness. In fact, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3 to 4, we see it right there. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that it was good. And God divided the light and the darkness. In other words, God is aware that there is darkness. Now, I said this to you before and I want you to listen to this again. Darkness exists irrespective of light what makes us appreciate light is the fact that there is darkness and what makes us appreciate darkness is the fact that there is light darkness is a constant derivative it's always there for example like i said to you before if you turn off all the lights in this room right now what's going to happen you're going to realize that everywhere is going to be dark and then if i turn on all the lights forget all of these ones right there every single light in this room What's going to happen? You're going to find out that darkness disappears. The question is, where was darkness all this while? Darkness exists. Darkness is always there. The difference is that light comes to subdue darkness. And that's why we say there is light and darkness. And so this is such a powerful statement when God said, let there be light and there was light. In other words, darkness would always exist. And so... As believers, as culture shapers, we are at war with light and darkness. Is somebody still with me? And then in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, it gets a little bit more interesting here. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. That's so why I call this the and over button. Remember the Bible says the heavens, even the heavens is the Lord's, the earth as he given to the children of men. 
The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the worlds and pay that dwell therein. So when God made man, he said, let us make man our own image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Look at that. That's so powerful. Over the fishes of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every single thing that creeps upon the earth. And so God blessed man. In other words, God gave man the authority of the earth. And what does that simply mean? God gave man the ability and the right to shape the earth. That's culture shaping. Cultivate the garden. Tend to the garden. In other words, every single thing that is on this garden, you now have the permission to create its narrative and design it how you want it to be designed. That's culture shaping. That's the first thing God did. And he gave man all of those abilities. And so, the fullness of the Godhead was handed over to, the, to mankind for us to have authority over the earth. Now, I wrote something here and I want you to look, this, look at this. I said, God basically said to man, culture the earth. Culture the earth. Now, let's go. What then is culture? This is a profound definition I want to give to you this morning. And I, th I think it's going to transform your life. What is culture? Culture is what we do with what God has given us. Culture. It's so simple. Culture is what we do with what God has given to us. In other words, if God gives you... Can I touch some things this morning? If God calls you a man... And you decide to act or to become a woman. You have chosen your culture because culture is whatever God gives to you and you decide what you want to do with it. Is somebody still with me? So I wrote it right here. I said, what we do with what God has made. That's what we call our culture. Depending on the part of the world you're from. London, Britain. Germany, they have their own culture. Culture is made up of a belief, a language, the world of thinking and dressing. What God has given to them is what they decide to create as a culture for themselves. Now, let's look a little bit deeper. This is where it gets very interesting. In Genesis chapter 3, let's go there. Genesis chapter 3. Let's start from verse chapter 2 first. Chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2, and, and out of the ground the Lord made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So you have three trees here. You can turn on more light here, guys. Media, please. So people can see the ones over here. Thank you. And so God had these three trees there. And so he told Adam and Eve and said, you can eat of everything you find in this garden, but there is one you must not touch. But guess what? You know, if I say to you guys, don't look this direction. Don't look at this direction. You know that's the direction you're going to want to look at. And all of a sudden, in that moment, Adam and Eve's eyes went straight to that place. Now, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 16, Genesis 2 verse 16, the Lord God commanded man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You may not freely eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And so we know the story of what happened next. Lights, please. I want some lights in this place. Thank you. Over there. Because I want to do create an analogy in a moment. And so Adam and Eve ate of the tree. Thank you. What happened next? Go to Genesis, the next slide. I want to show you guys something there. This is the very first question God 
spoke and asked man. And to today, this is the question that God is speaking to us as culture shapers. Remember when they ate of the tree, what happened then? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 11, it says, and it said, who told you you were naked? Who told you as a man, you are a woman? Who told you? Are, you? are you aware that that's the question? And that's the question as culture shapers we must be answering. Who told you? It's a who told you. The very first question God asked man was a question of who told you. Now we know who told them that. So the idea of culture shaping is someone is telling someone something that is contrary to what God has originally said and what you believe is what you think but God is saying who told you it's a who told you question and so as culture shapers the first premise for us to truly be a culture shaper is that we must know what was told because we can't know what was told if the question of who told you for example I I want to identify a scorpion I feel like a girl this morning and nobody's going to do anything about it because that's how I feel like but the question is who told you that now if we don't answer that question guess what guys someone has told people something now in your mind you're thinking yeah 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 the devil told them it's not only the devil I'll give you a story. I've shared this story before. I'm thinking to myself now, Shala, who told you you're going to be a rapper? Just think about it. How did that happen for me? Can you imagine I literally was planning to wax an album? Like, I wanted to release songs. Rap. Can I give you some? I know, I know you're going to ask for it. I'm not going to. I grew up listening to hardcore music, Benzino, Easy E, Bone Talks and Harmony, Tupac, Nas Rodamos. Nas was my favorite artist of all time. Um, I almost said Nas is. <laughs> it's not. Amen. And I, I was really encapsulated by that kind of music. And I got to a point I would put my own jeans. Now my jeans is here now, but I put my jeans here. I'm walking like a frog with chains on my neck how did that happen to me who told me that's who I am guess what in this new age the, the serpent doesn't speak directly to you it is pleasing to the eyes a tree to make one wise that's what is telling you so the attack from the church is once it's pleasing to the eyes it's a tree desirable to make one wise we are being told what we should look like. In other words, we must be able to counterattack that process by saying, this is what is right. Now, let me say something to you. When people say, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder, I don't agree with that statement. Beauty lies in the eyes of God with the right person beholding what God calls beauty. Because you can call anything beauty. Oh yes, you can call a frog beauty. A friend of mine told me a story about his boss at work in the UK, of course, who decided that our gratuity and our will will be written, no, not will be written, she wrote it to a dog. <laughs> I'm like, how rich is your boss? She told me, I said, can, can she? <laughs> I, can, I can fit him. <laughs> who told you? That's the question God is asking. And that's the question as culture shapers. And that's what we came here for this morning to answer. The who told you question. Now, my people perish for lack of knowledge. In other words, if we cannot answer the who told you question, we cannot be culture shapers. Is somebody stay with me? So let's go. Let's go on. This is the same question God is still asking the world today using culture shapers. Now, let's look at things. We're in a fallen world. I think there's a festival in Brazil that they do every year. 
And what they do is that they make your Lord Jesus in a pictorial image look small and nothing. And so they drag him with an image of the devil like this. And what happens, this is the most powerful thing they do in that festival, is that at the end of it, on a big throne, this image that you see here would now sit on that throne and put his legs on the image that represents Christ and starts laughing. And then the show ends. Let's look at some other ones because I'm going somewhere with this this morning. I came as my first teaching to get you guys angry. Because you see, the church, we've sort of demystified these things and we've put God in one box. We've put the church in one box. Then we've put culture in one box. And then we've put, quote unquote, the gospel in one box. And then we put ourselves here. And then we hide under the fact that we say we are the... Um, we are in the world, but we are not of this world. So I just want to make it to heaven. And everybody just wants to stay away from all those things. But guess what? The first great commission, yes, is go into the, all the world and preach the gospel. But you can't do that without culture shaping. It's culture shaping. Culture shaping is, is basically changing the way. Remember when um, John the Baptist came and even Jesus, the word repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The word repent there means change the way you think. In the early church, are you aware that when they entered into cities like Ephesus, they changed the economical landscape of Ephesus. They brought language to Greece. And some of the things that we call artistry today, pictures and drawings and all of those things, all came out from the church. What is the main purpose of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the first place? So change the way people think. So you see images of this. I've showed you pictures. Remember what happened in your Olympics? And Christians started to react afterwards. You know why things like that happen? Is because we are always on the defensive and I'm going to get to that in a moment and we always react to everything that is going on and we stay away from what is required for us to truly engage in that place why because we don't want to soil our hands can I go ahead of myself a little bit are you aware that in the new generation age if you find yourself in a situation where you are the one that was sent as a spy and you got to the house of Rahab, the prostitute. Chances are that a tongue-talking believer like you and I will not stay in the house of Rahab. Now, I'm not telling you to go to prostitute's house. So. What am I trying to say there? I'm trying to say that truly, and I'm going to get to that in a moment, that truly for us to really shape culture, there would actually be strategic partnership with people that look like darkness. But you see, the Bible says this light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. So there will be required partnerships with darkness. But guess what? Every artist, have you, real, have you realized that most artists that have attempted to create any form of partnership with what we call or assume as darkness, the church attacks those people the most. And so people don't have, they have no business singing hallelujah songs and worship songs. They've now eaten under the, 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 the covering of the anointing and they're not going to do what they're supposed to do because they don't want to be stained and contaminated. So, let's look at, there's a guy called Ilnaz that, picture, that created a pictorial image of him having sex with the devil. Remember the, 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 the image I showed you guys the other day? Um, uh, what's this? I've forgotten that name of the person, but next slide, let's go on. Who told you is the question. And so as a church, we are at war. We have to fight for space through culture shaping. It's a, listen guys, 
This is a fight for space war. Now, I want to show you something so critical and so powerful. Remember when God spoke to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7. You see, many times when we read Joshua chapter 1, the part of the scripture that we know the most in Joshua chapter 1 is the fact that, you know, this book of the Lord shall not depart of thy mouth. But let's look at the promise that God gave to Joshua there. Let's look at that in a moment. Look at what the Bible says. It says, and after Moses, Yahweh's servant died, Yahweh spoke to Joshua, the son of Noah, Moses' faithful assistant, and said, my servant Moses is dead. Now get up, prepare to cross the Jordan River. You and all the people, lead them into the land that I'm giving to the Israelites. Every part of the land where you march, I will give to you as promised Moses. I have promised Moses. Look at what it says. It says, your borders will extend from the southern desert to the northern mountains of Lebanon. Look at what it says. It's talking about space. And from the great river Ephrates in the east, in the east to the Mediterranean in the, in the west, including all of the land of the Hittites. Etite. In other words, it's saying, I'm going to give you room and space. But you, Joshua, you are going to have to be brave, brave and courageous. It's a fight for space. It's a fight for space. And a new generation church, if we lie on the old people are coming to church and I have no problem with numbers. We, we have numbers, so I have no problem with that. But if we lie on numbers and hide on the numbers, guess what? We find out that we are only in you know, there's a way we can sometimes be excited about mediocrity. And I say this with every sense of humility. We see 1,000 people, 2,000 people. We say the old Lagos was packed. 1,000 people. Or 3,000 people. Are you aware that even in the grand scheme of things, a 2 million people packed in Lagos is still not good? I truly think that if Jesus was alive at this time, while the big crusades are great, you can't take that away. We're still going to do that. But I think that Jesus is going to be big on culture shaping. Are you aware that one song can change the narrative of everybody's life? Let me give an example. What's this? Talk to me. Who taught you that? Who told you? Remember? Where did you see it from? There's another one. Give me, give me that. Azonto Abi. What's this one? <laughs> and some of you you spent all your lifetime from part one to part three trying to get that dance because you didn't want to miss out please write this down culture shaping should be first subtle and then becomes a movement Look at the person behind you and say, draw your sword. Let's fight for space. Let's go on. So the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by how? The renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Then the Bible says also in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 and 15, it says, salt of the... Now, look guys, we have to read this one together. Can you all see the screen? Can we read it together? Okay, I want us to roll this together because I want to point out something so powerful out of the scripture. Let's roll this together, everybody. One, two, ready, let's go. Salt of the earth, light of the world. Let me tell you why you are here. You are here to... That brings out God's... Fl Hold on. Can we, can we take it together? Let's make it louder in this place. Can we do that? All right, let's do it. One, two, ready, go. Yes, 
another way to put it, you are here to be a light. Everybody bring out your phones and turn on your lights and raise it up. Everyone, please. You know that thing that we see, light of the world, don't wake. Everyone turn on your phone. Light of the church. Talk to me. Light of the church. Light of the streets. Light of where? Now, does this suggest to you that if your light goes off, take your lights down? What happened in this room right now? There's darkness. Can we take our lights back up? Wow. What happened right here? Let's try one more time. Let's take it down. Let's take it up one more time. Say, shout it, I'm the light of the world. A city set upon the hill, I cannot be hidden. So quickly, let me begin to close now. Let's look at culture shaping. And let's talk culture shaping for a moment. So number one, write this down if you can. The church has separated society versus God, preaching the gospel versus culture shaping. That's not what it's supposed to be. All together, we've been given one mandate. Shape the earth. Culture the earth. And so there's not supposed to be a separation. We're not supposed to come to church every morning, Sunday, midweek, vigils, and that's all that there is. No. We're supposed to take our wisdom, strategies, insight, and all of these things that we are getting and take it to change the world. Number two. There are forces holding the culture gates that, are, that only allow who they choose in. There are forces holding the culture gates. Now, I want to speak to something going on on social media right now. And are you guys with me? Are you aware that many of the propagandas that you see online and many of the things that we talk about, what we call conversation or what we call trends or what we call um, things that we all jump into are basically created by people we will never meet. And what happens there is that once you come to a point of influence, they identify you, bring you on board. And once they bring you on board, they begin to empower you passing through you their own agenda. But there are gates in those places that certain people will never be able to enter until you force your way through that place. You can't just wake up one morning and say, I want to, I want to, I want to break through in movies. You can't just wake up one morning and say, because there are power blocks. Music is one of them. Movies is one of them. Now, influencing is one of it. Those, those places are gates. And there are people that have big pockets that powers those gates. Can I say this here? You know, in church, sadly, in the Nigerian church, sadly, we have been taught to be consumers. Our prayer points are usually consumer prayer points. Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. Lord, give me, give me, give me. Every family member that will not allow my progress, let them die right now, let them die right now. There's nothing wrong with praying. But sometimes we miss the bigger picture of what our prayers should really look like. And that's because we've been cultured to be consumers, not cultured to be producers. So we are not thinking globally. We are not thinking the world. The average young person that comes to church is not thinking, how do I have 50 businesses in 50 parts of the world? It's a big dream for people. Now, you can say what, you, what is correct, but not necessarily what you believe. 
You can say, oh, I want to be this, I want to be that. You don't believe what you're saying. But the first thing God did to man is be fruitful, have dominion, subdue the earth. God gave man the power to rule the earth. That's so powerful. And that's how we must think. How do we take media? How do we have a spot in music? Can I say this here? I think that until the church in Africa begins to fund music big time and movies big time, not just large, big conferences, I think we are still playing. There's nothing wrong with big conferences. I do big conferences. There's nothing wrong with that. But we must get to the point where where are the people getting their way of thinking? Who is telling them? Remember the question. Who told you? Who is telling them? Can we go to that place? The very first question that God asked man. Who told you? Can we go to that very same place and begin to change the way people think from that place as well? Can I say something? Do you know that church people to today still struggle to pay ticket money to attend a concert? Or you can give that money to your favorite other ce celebrities. It means we are not really ready. We just come to church and we're excited. Woo, hallelujah, yeah, woo, woo, woo. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. I read a statistics last night that baffled my life. And I said to the Lord in prayer, I said, Lord, just let me play my own part. In America, six, I don't know how, but I read that statistic, said six out of every 15 young person you now meet are walking away from church. And they call their gods now, the movies, you know, I've taught you guys about um, modernistic therapeutic daisy, a new kind of religion seems like Christ their ideology looks like Christianity but totally different when you fall under the power of the Holy Ghost you must come out with an idea there's nothing wrong with shaking and falling under the power nothing wrong with laying on of hands I lay hands, we shake under the power but we must have a global perspective we must fight for space The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 6, And now the gates of Jericho were bolted and burned because of the Israelites, and no one could get in or out. Some of your favorite celebrities are only just images of people that lock the gate against them. There's somebody else in the room operating everything. What you even see online right now happening to one of your favorite celebrities, I can tell you the fact that there are people that are the perpetrators of some of those assignments. Before you ask God for greatness, be ready, you have the capacity for it. The third thing I want to say here is that culture shaping is a game of money, not a game of hallelujah. Oh, did I touch something there? There's nothing wrong with hallelujah. What's a game of money? And so we are still fighting against tithes. 10%, 20%. It's a game of money. Anyone who has the money or prints the table, it's a game of money. Number four, anyone who controls the narrative leads the rest. So, there are three things I want to say. As a culture shaper, please write this down. There are three things. You must either be a mobilizer, a funder, or the person with the idea. A mobilizer, a funder, or the person with the idea. Either of those three things. You must find, today before you leave this room, you must find yourself in one of those three. You are either mobilizing, galvanizing, pulling people in, or you are funding with your money. Big time. And that's why when, as a business owner, when you're doing business, you know that, look, we have to change something here. Number five. 
create what is pleasing to the heart and the ears. Now, can I say this here? I think sometimes we make mistakes as well as culture shapers that we just tell people who have grown to a point and we just tell them, just take whatever. There's a level of spiritual excellence that we must begin to put in all the things that we do. A level of excellence. We must still play the game. It must be pleasing. Don't say, oh, once it's pleasing to the eyes, it's the devil. Is this place pleasing to your eyes? Is it the devil? Imagine I showed up here this morning. Am I pleasing to the eyes? Wait, 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 wait. Let me take a walk first. Let me take a walk. I know I'm going to distract you. Let's continue. <laughs> it must be pleasing to the eyes. We must be able to curate things by the Spirit. Number five. Number six. Real global evangelism is now culture shaping. That's real global evangelism right now. It's culture shaping. I'm likely, depending on what the Lord gives me as instruction, but I'm likely to spend more money now um, producing a major song or movie or building someone to have a stature of influence. Because that's another thing we need to talk about in church. You know, sometimes we, when we teach, we teach the extreme of influence. And so we say, let God hide you, let God hide you. And people are hiding for the rest of their life. But think about what God told Abraham. God told Abraham, I will make you famous. So the famous is not a sin. Christians will say, you will be famous. It, are, you not, are you aware that sometimes when, people, when you pray for Christians, you will be famous? They are like, because someone said, hey, you know, what took a man to the top has followed him to the top. You know some of these quotes that, we, that disturbs your greatness? Can I say something here? Influence is actually part of the game. Are, are you aware? Oh, yes. Number seven, the design is to look mysterious, unreachable, or and unattainable. And that's one of the things that culture shaping does. Culture shapers, you, you, they, they create a persona. But let me run because of time. Okay. Apply the rules of the originals and divergent. I'll explain what that means. Have real creativity. But as you do that also, look for existing blocks and tweak them as well. Did you get that? All right, let's close. Create a collective irresistible movement. That's the last thing I want to speak on. What do I mean by that? As a church, the new... Let's take our creed together before I say the last thing. One, two, ready, go. I am the new, and I have no taste for mere religion without change. I live a result-oriented, purpose-driven life based on the principles in God's Word. I'm a man of the Word. I'm yielded to the Spirit. I'm committed to God's purpose for my life. I take my place in God's supernatural army and His agenda for the earth and my generation, and I bring great joy to my city. Raise it high. As sure as God helps me, I will not give up. I will not cave in. I will not quit. I will not fail. I will not fear. I will not die until my job is done and victory is won. I am the new. Can I tell you what the world cannot stand against? It's a strong movement. Now, sometimes in church we don't talk about it because they say, well, why, why are we deliberately creating a movement? No. Listen, one time I spoke to one of, I don't want to mention his name, a very top politician in this country through a friend. And the friend told me this. He said, the politician said this, someone everybody knows. He said, the church, he said, it is sad that the church does not know what they have. He said, every month, you can gather this number. Every Sunday. The power that we have in the collective in this room. And that's what we are doing in the new. The new is not just a church. The new is a movement. And that's the reason why this year is our first time of doing the next con focused on culture shaping. 
And as we go forward as a church family in this great movement, we would be more intentional about speaking on culture, transformation, and getting everyone on board. Can I say this to you? We are going to do music that is not only church music. Now, the church people don't want to answer me. We're going to produce movies that is not for church people alone. Because one thing the world cannot resist is a strong movement. Bring out your phones one more time, turn on your lights, and rise on your feet, everyone. Someone shout, movement! Turn your lights on. And you're going to say these words with me. Everyone, please turn your lights on. Can I have one? Thank you. You're going to say these words with me. This morning, I believe this is a supernatural army. This morning, before God, I choose to make an eternal commitment to culture shaping. And as sure as God helps me, I will not give up. I will not cave in. I will not quit. I will not fail. I will not fear. I will not die until our job is done and victory is won we 